marriage is a beautiful thing when you go into it with the right foundation and the right person. But the unfortunate reality is that tons, millions of people have not done that. They haven't had the right foundation and unfortunately, yes, they married the wrong person. And this can happen because we don't properly do our due diligence before we cross certain lines with people, before we move our relationship to the next step. So it's very important that you understand the questions you should ask a man before you marry him. Now, listen, some of these questions you, you probably need to ask before you even get in a relationship with him, right? But we're going to put it in, in, within the context of before you get into marriage. So let's get to it. The first uh, question to ask him is what are his sexual and emotional expectations and desires? So let's break this down. So one, I started this off with sex because let's face it, that's one of the biggest issues married couples are facing. All right. It's a big problem. If you're not aware, I'm, I'm making you aware right now because as a coach, been doing this for a long time. I hear it every single time. And there's such a huge disconnect between the man and the woman when it comes to the sex life and, and how they relate to each other sexually. Now, this, this can encompass a lot of various different things, but let's focus on the question of what are his first expectations? You need to find out what he is looking for from you sexually because the majority of men, if not all, are going into marriage with what they're hoping is going to be a certain amount of sex, consistent sex. I want to use the word consistent uh, emphatically because listen, it's not a few times here or a good, good week of it here and then several weeks of no action and then we get to it again. No, no, no. Consistent. Like they can count on it. All right. Because for that man, he, he, whether he feels like he needs that release or he just wants to indulge in you sexually, that's part of the program. And because a lot of people don't have those discussions, part of that is because if you are already engaging in sexual relations in the relationship, you, you both may feel like, or he may feel like everything is great. And his perception is, what he's getting from you now should remain constant after marriage. And part of the reason why he believes that is because men view it as if, if, for example, you enjoy having sex with him or that's what you present to him as your feelings towards it. He may think, oh, okay, she's just a woman who likes sex. She enjoys sex with me, so I shouldn't have a problem getting it from her later. What he doesn't understand in most cases is that as a woman, there are factors that make you more sexually receptive or less sexually receptive to your man. And if he just thinks you liking sex is just who you are, so essentially it doesn't matter what he does, if you're just in the mood, then he'll get some. And since you seem to be in the mood more often than not while you're in boyfriend-girlfriend phase, he's thinking, all right, we should be good. But you have to communicate to him. Uh, unless you truly are that woman where you just love it so much, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are, you're all for it. But the majority of women are impacted emotionally, mentally, as far as how receptive they're going to be. And if that is not discussed pre-marriage, there's going to be a huge problem after it. So there, there's the issue of how much he's looking for, but there has to be a discussion of what you're going to need from him to even keep up that amount of activity, all right? To be receptive to him consistently. Because if he just thinks about, it's about you being horny or not, we got a huge problem on, on our hands. Not only is it about the consistency, the amount of it, it's also about the quality of it, the, the actual actions within the bedroom. So here's one example, and I hope this isn't too much for some of you, right? But let's just say he loves oral sex, 
He loves it to death. Or, you know, sex for him without oral sex is like a sandwich without the meat. It's like we're just eating bread, all right? <laughs> and, and he's not feeling that. He needs meat in his sandwich, right? So, but let's say for you, yeah, you, you did it a decent amount of times in the relationship. And, and listen, I'm not saying, in this video, we're not discussing whether it's right or wrong to be having sex before marriage. We, you know how I roll with that. But I understand many are still engaging in it. So we're talking about it from the perspective of you are, have been engaging in it. And even if you haven't, you still have to have these discussions. If you two are waiting till marriage, these are still very important questions and discussions to have. But anyways, back to the example. He loves his oral sex. You're not too fond of it. All right. You, you did it. You, you, you got through it as much as best as you can while you were dating. But now that you're married, eh, you don't care for it too much. And you may think, well, as long as I have sex with him, he'll be okay. No. <laughs> no. If he loves that specific act, it's, no, it's not just about lay down with him. It's about the things that he wants. Because now, if he's not getting the oral sex from you in the marriage, that can turn into frustration, resentment. That then pours over into other aspects of the relationship. Now you guys are fighting each other over little small nonsense. But it all started from he's frustrated with him not getting what he's looking for in the bedroom. So there has to be a talk about it because sometimes the things that he may be looking for, you may not be cool with. You may be like, no, 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 I draw my line here and I'm not going past it. And you have every right to feel that way. I'm in no way going to tell you to compromise whatever your, your values and beliefs are. What I am going to tell you is if you know you are unwilling to provide his desires in uh, the bedroom, you need to think twice about moving forward because it's, it's basically a setup for disaster. A and... That disaster can come in the form of a low quality relationship and or infidelity. I'm just going to be real with you. It's unlikely that he's going to be able to deny himself of this strong desire for an extended amount of time. He might get through year one, two, three, but man, at some point he's going elsewhere. That's just what typically is going to happen. So you want to talk about the expectations, but again, you want to talk about desires too, because I, I said expectations and desires because when you ask someone what they expect, I feel like people answer with the bare minimum. Well, at the very least, I need two to three times a week, right? At the very least, I need this. But when you ask them, what is your desire? Well, what I really want is every day. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not, maybe that's his thing, maybe that's not. But I'm saying, like, when we ask for desires, it's, up a, it's another notch up. And you want to be aware of the expectations and the desires because, again, it just plays such a huge role in marriage and it cannot be overlooked. All right, so now real quick, before I move on to the next uh, question, let me add a little bit to this topic. One, do not agree to things you're not really down for. All right? If you know there are certain sexual activities or sexual frequency that really isn't your cup of tea, do not say yes just to push things along and move towards the next level of the relationship when you know you cannot sustain that. I think also there has to be a discussion of or a, a trying to gain an understanding of are you dealing with a conservative man or a more, let's just use the word, free-spirited man, right? Someone who's going to be a little bit more into experimenting and trying different things. Now, again, if you are that woman and he's that guy, awesome. But you don't want to be a, a, a conservative woman trying to be with a free-spirited guy. That can create a lot of conflict. Or in reverse, you may be the free-spirited woman and he's the overly conservative guy. So you want to ga gain an understanding of what, how they even view sex overall and, and, and what's their vision. And, and understand that ultimately, listen, no matter what, there's always going to be changes as we grow. And, and, and we, we gain more life experience. And that can lead to people wanting to try things that they thought they would never want to try before. And so I think when we fortify the rest of the relationship, it makes it easier to grow in those areas together. But just understand that, yes, there, there may be always have some level of flexibility is what I'm getting at. 
because there's going to always be some things that could change, but you still want to have a great foundation of understanding each other when it comes to intimacy. All right, so now the second question you should ask a man before you marry him is what is his vision of success? And so essentially, how far is he trying to go? Here's what I'm saying. You know, there's a quote, I'm always saying it, where men marry women hoping they will never change. Women marry men hoping they will change. And essentially, a lot of times, women marry a man based off of untapped potential, what they still believe he can become and not necessarily who he actually is right now. They're still hoping for better, all right? And they're optimistic about it, but still, it's a hope that may or may not be realized. And so when we talk about success, what I'm speaking more specifically to is, for example, let's just say this man, and, and this, there's nothing wrong with either side of this coin, but you have to understand it. Let's just say this man is, his vision of success is making $50,000, having his home, bills paid, some money saved, living a very simple life, all right? To him, he's good there. As a woman, if you can accept that and accept it with the understanding of he's not trying to go past that point, because if that's his view of success, then that then to him, I don't need to work harder than that. Once I get here, I'm good. If you're good with that, cool. But if you know you're a woman who's going to want him to be more than that, I would advise not moving forward because what happens in so many situations is, again, the woman is holding on to what she believes he can become, not understanding what he is comfortable being. And now it creates this dynamic where you're trying to pull him to this higher level and he feels a frustration and resentment towards you because you're not accepting who he is. And then you get tired with the burden of having to carry him and the frustration of the resistance he shows you, all right? This is not a situation you wanna find yourself in. So it's important to find out from him what he sees as success. What is his level of content in the relationship? And ask yourself, will you be happy if he doesn't go past that, all right? Now listen, as I said earlier, sometimes things can change. He, he may find a new motivation in life that, that makes him want to push further than that, all right? And cool, I, I think in most, most cases, a woman's not going to have a problem with a guy wanting to go higher, even if she's okay with where he's at and that never changes. But that's what you want to go in with. It's like, okay, if it doesn't change, I can accept that. If it does get better, oh, then that's just icing on the cake. So make sure you have that discussion and I also think, this is what's coming to me now, I wasn't going to mention this, but if you do view him as an unfinished product, all right, and that might be hard to acknowledge for some people, but if you view him in that way, I think it's important to have an honest discussion and say, listen, I love you, I, I care about you, I want to be with you, but this is where I see you, and this is where I want to see you. And then see if he says, okay, well, you know what? I, I wasn't thinking about going that far in life, but I can do that. And I'm cool with that. And, I, and I'm happy with pushing that far, you know? Or he might be like, nah, that's not for me. I, I just, nah, I, I can't see myself doing those things. I can't see myself, what, what you see in me, I, I, don't, I don't accept that. All right? I don't, I don't embrace that as my life's path. And so that's when you may have to accept that, nah, you two are just not best for each other. All right, so now let's move things along. And before we do, real quick, like this video and subscribe to this channel. I appreciate it. So number three, I'm not going to lie. This is a little tricky. I hesitated to put this on the list, but I think it's important we discuss this, all right? And you'll understand once I break it down. The third question to ask him is, who will be a bigger priority, me or your mother? So here's the thing. I know there are a lot of you who feel like this is a silly question. And you may feel like, hey, listen, that's his mother, you know, and, and why should anyone come first or be a priority? You know, if he has to take care of his mother, all these things. That's cool. And, and, and listen, if you truly 
do not have a problem with a man choosing his mother over you constantly, fine. And I do think that this question will be also dependent on finding out what his relationship with his mother even is and what kind of mother does he even have. Because there are some mothers who will not even put you in a position where you will, be felt, you will feel like you are less of a priority. However, there are some mothers who are going to run your marriage or at least attempt to. And if you are dealing with a man who does not prioritize you over his mother, you're in for a long, bumpy ride, I'm telling you right now. Like, I've seen a lot of relationships and marriages be hugely negatively impacted by a mother who is not being set straight, who does not understand the boundaries that need to be had between her and her son and this relationship, and who do not respect the wife of their son enough to where it causes all kinds of conflict. Now understand something. When we pose the question of who is a bigger priority, it is not to say like he's supposed to neglect his mother. I think any man who, who is a loving, kind, good man, unless he has a bad relationship with his mother, that's a different story. But anyone who just has a decent to good relationship with their mother is going to want to, you know, be a good son to their mother, honor their mother in that way. But what we're, what we're talking about more here is the scenario where his mother needs something from him. And he is sacrificing things in the relationship. So now he is taking from you to give to her in a way that negatively impacts the relationship. And also, it's not just a one-off. I, I think any woman who is married to a man, if once in a blue moon, the mother needs something more, you may as a woman say, no, just go, go take care of that. I'm good. We're fine. But when it's constant... And when you can start to sense that this mother is blatantly overstepping her bounds and inconveniencing you, this is when it can become very problematic. So asking him this question is really about understanding his mindset. Does he view his wife as priority? Now listen, me, I am, I am a man of God. I believe in the order of things where it's God, spouse, I believe, kids work. Kids and work, I might have confused. But anyways, the I, one thing I know for sure, God, spouse, okay? God, then your partner. I believe in that. And, 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 and to me, I would never put, and my mother wouldn't, wouldn't let me put her over my wife. You know what I'm saying? When it, when it comes to making sure, you have to make sure the house is, is good. You have to make sure you take care of home. All right. Again, it doesn't mean neglect the mother, but you have to have a proper balance of things. So anyways, not to drag this along. The point is it's about understanding his mindset and making sure that he has proper boundaries set up with his mother and with any family member so that you two can thrive in this relationship together. All right. Rather than having outside influences derail it. All right. So now the next question is, what is his relationship with money? All right. So we're going to break this down to three little quick things. First aspect is, is he a spender or a saver? All right. I think it's important to understand, does this man have very expensive tastes? Does he have uh, a spending habit or is he more frugal? Now, again, which one he is and if that works for you is going to depend on you. So basically, if you are an extremely frugal woman, getting with a big spender can become a huge conflict unless you two can agree upon a proper structure of how you guys will manage money. Discussing, okay, well, if we're going to spend over a certain amount, we have to discuss it with each other, but anything less than that, do what you want, you know? It, it, as long as this is being taken care of first, you know, pay bills and things first, and then you can have fun. Like, you, you have to have these discussions because if not, it can go all haywire in the relationship. And it's the same thing on the flip side. Let's say you are 
a spender, <laughs> all right? And he's super frugal. Hell, let's, let's go as far as he can be cheap, all right? This can also still be a conflict. So it's making sure you two are on the same page on how you view money and how you view the management of that money, all right? Spending, investment, so on and so forth. The second aspect that has to be discussed is what kind of debt is he carrying? Listen, if we're going to get married to each other, we have to know each other's financial situation because now we're going to be partially responsible for this stuff. And, the, and our individual debt will have an impact on what we can or cannot do in this marriage financially, at least until these things are taken care of. So there needs to be full disclosure on the debt that's being carried. Now, listen, I am not saying that you shouldn't marry him if he has debt. I, I, I do think you have to take a moment to understand what kind of debt it is. There's a difference between someone who ran up their credit card versus someone who owns student, lo owns student loans. All right. That's very different debt. It plays into very different uh, habits with money, so to speak. All right. So we, we got to We got to go deeper into it, but we do need to know what it is. And then the third aspect that kind of connects to the debt is credit. All right. There needs to be a discussion on credit. But again, I have to say this. You cannot simply hear a credit score and make an evaluation on this person. That's a huge mistake. I see people saying, well, if their credit score ain't this, this, then I can't be with them. Listen, credit scores are fluid. They can change. You can improve. You can make them worse. So even if it's a low score right now, it's about understanding why it's low. All right. So again, th there's a difference between someone who ran up a bunch of credit cards and never paid them versus someone who may have an outstanding hospital bill in a situation that came unexpectedly at a time that they weren't able to handle it. You know, there's a difference between a low credit score. Because, hell, there might be some incorrect information on the credit report. Like there's all kinds of deeper explanations to it. Or I, I'll give you one example. I'll use me. There was, I, I went from at one time having a high 700 to being like low 500 because I used to be in the real estate investment, market crashed, credit crashed with it, <laughs> all right? And, and I had to rebuild. And now I'm back, you know, 800, whatever. But the point is, if, if a woman would have looked at that just at the score, she would have said, oh, you, well, you, I can't be with you. But the explanation for it was simply due to real estate investment. And, and once understood, then you would realize, okay, all my other accounts were in good standing. I know how to pay my bills. It was just a very isolated incident. So you want to examine it further so you understand what exactly you're getting yourself into and what kind of person financially you are dealing with. All right, so let's keep this moving. Next question that must be asked before you marry a man is how will we handle conflict? All right. So I'm going to look at this from two, two main things that we have to include in this discussion. One, how we will communicate in conflict. All right. Having structure in place. I think one of the mistakes people make is they have no understanding of what the rules of engagement are with each other when it comes to disagreements, when it comes to tense situations, things of that nature. It could be, okay, if we have certain things to say, maybe we do it by letter. It could be understanding, okay, if we're upset, we give ourselves each other a 24 hour period to decompress before we sit down and talk. It could be, okay, we agree that we don't go to sleep angry with each other. And before the night is over, we have a discussion about these things. Whatever floats your boat, you want to put these things in place in advance. We don't want to wait till the stuff hits the fan before we're trying to figure out how to handle things because it's in that moment where your emotions are running wild, you're angry, it's much harder to, to think of a healthy approach and implement it at that time. But when we discussed it pre-negative event, then we have a much better chance of ensuring that we understand how to best navigate these moments. But the other aspect of this discussion that needs to be had is, are we open to counseling if it gets to that point? I think that's a discussion that, or that's a question that needs to be asked because one, I believe that before you get married, you should do premarital counseling. I believe everybody should. 
I think having a third party help you dissect all the issues is a very wise thing to do. But you really want to know if this man is open to exploring all measures of resolution. All right. Or is he someone that's going to be like, no, I don't do counseling. End of story. It, we either work it out ourselves or we can't work it out at all. And again, whether you're cool with that or not is up to you, but you need to know what kind of man you're dealing with when it comes to these things. So talk about it, but I, but I do think that if it can be encouraged, counseling should be included as at least a last, uh, last ditch effort. Like, okay, listen, we're going to try to always work things out on our own, but if we reach a point, a stalemate, and we're not seeing any progress, then can we agree at that point, we then do counseling? And he's like, all right, cool, then you guys are good to go. All right, so I'm on to the next question, but before I mention it real quick, you know, I'm always getting asked about how can you sit down and talk with me? And you people want their questions answered, they want coaching, and there's so many inquiries coming my way, I simply cannot handle them all. So what I did was I created this special membership coaching program just for you to join where you're going to learn about tapping into your feminine energy, meeting quality, relationship-minded men, healing, hearing God more clearly, finding your purpose. So many amazing things that's not just going to enhance your love life, but enhance your life overall. So take advantage and join my program today. Go to receivingmyblessings.com or you can click the link in the description or in the comment section. All right, so this next question is a quick one. And it's very simple. It is, do you want kids and how many? All right. Now, I think that most women ask this question. At least I believe they do. But I, I still want to make sure it was mentioned because, again, I have seen some situations where it wasn't fully discussed and it became a point of tension within the marriage. All right. You simply want to make sure you both are on the same page. Now, I will say that the desire for kids and how many can change, does change for a lot of people. It can go from, I only wanted one kid to I wanted three. It can go from, I wanted four to, man, that's too much at this point. I'm good at two. Like these things can fluctuate, but you guys want to just make sure you're on the same page with it. And I think what's very important that people overlook is what is the, what are the circumstances we need in place if we want to add more children. So what I mean by that is this, we need to discuss the financial ramifications of having children, all right? Because there's gonna be an impact and sometimes the resistance from one or the other partner is due to feeling like we cannot handle this financially. Though we may want this emotionally, it may not be the wisest thing right now. So what do we need to work towards in order to make it feasible for us to do it? But then also in addition to financially, what are the emotional ramifications? And what I mean by that is this, and I'll give one example. There's a lot of situations where a husband has been asked by his wife to have more children. Let's say they already had two kids, she wants a third. And for him, the issue is not about having an additional child sp specifically. The issue is I don't get the attention I need from you now. For us to add a third child, now I'm really going to get thrown down to the bottom of the barrel in this family. He does not want to be even more neglected by adding another child to the equation. So for him, the emotional, uh, what would be needed emotionally is to make sure that you are prioritizing his needs in order to feel like I'm not going to lose by us adding another member to this family. All right. And again, it can, it can be on the other side too. That, that can happen, but I will say it typically happens more with the man feeling neglected. So there needs to be discussions in advance about all of that. So again, so that when it's time to, to work on those things, we can both be on the same page and happy about going on that journey to having another child. All right, so now here's another question to ask before you uh, marry him. And that is, how does he view your role in this marriage? His and yours, all right? I think it's important, you know, one of the things that people overlook is they don't know 
what their partner is truly expecting from them once married and and make the mistake of assuming that you're just going to transition smoothly from boyfriend girlfriend and however you guys are operating in that dynamic to it being the same thing just being married and no <laughs> that's not always the case on both sides there are things that now the woman may not have demanded of the man as boyfriend and girlfriend that she's in the demand of him as a husband and same thing for him so there needs to be a talk on how do we see our roles now some of y'all may say why do there need to be gender roles it's not even about gender roles it's about roles there has to be roles in any structure of two or more people coming together business sports whatever when people don't know their roles things will fall apart all right and and there will be a disconnect and it will be very hard to see the full potential of this union without a, an understanding of the role we play in it. So, and, and listen, it doesn't mean we don't need to learn. Like, so for example, if he sees your role as taking care of the home and cooking, right? Does it mean he shouldn't learn how to cook? No, I think everyone should be able to be capable of handling the other person's roles in moments where, let's say you get sick, he needs to be able to hold it down while you're sick. And the same way, if there's certain things that he typically does, and then he gets, you know, he's unable to do them, you gotta be able to pick up where he can, where he leaves off at times. But what y'all main roles will be, there needs to be an understanding of that. All right. And make sure you, you both accept what that vision is. Cause if not, then again, there should be no moving forward here. All right. So now we're gonna make these last two quick. And, uh, the second to last one is, what are the top three things he needs to be satisfied and happy in this relationship? So ultimately, you know, we had that first question of emotional and sexual expectations. And you know what? I just realized I did not give y'all the emotional side. I, I spoke so much about the intimacy that I forgot about the emotional side. So let me just say real quick, for the emotional side of things, there needs to be a discussion as far as how we expect to be received by our partner, uh, to talk to by our partner, um, the kind of encouragement. You know, some people, how they like to be encouraged can vary. We want to set emotional expectations as well so that we understand what that person is looking for from us, all right? But in regards to the top three things, it's more so about figuring out what are the biggest priorities. Not, it doesn't mean the other stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't mean let the other stuff fall by the wayside. It just means, okay, I know at the very least, let me make sure these three things he needs, I can do. And that's the main thing. It's not even just about you saying, okay, I'll do it. Can you genuinely do it? And, and not just genuinely do it, but be happy doing it. Are you truly at peace fulfilling those desires? If not, then y'all should not move forward. But if yes, awesome, great there it is, all right? And now the last question to ask him before you marry him is what are the deal breakers? So we just talked about what those top priorities are. However, we need to know what are the things that are going to truly destroy this relationship. Now, I feel the need to mention this. Please do not be offended, but this is a real issue. You have to ask him, and both of you, both of you need to be honest about how much a change in our physical appearance will be a deal breaker. Now, I think that for a lot of people, what happens is, one, they're not honest about it. They don't want to seem shallow. They don't want to seem like it's all about that, but it plays a huge role. As well as for a lot of people, they, it may not be a deal breaker where they'll leave you because of it. But it's a deal breaker in the sense that they will not put forth the effort and pour into you the way that you need because of it. So essentially, when attraction goes out the door, respect can leave with it. Affection can leave with it. Uh, um, um, just, just the way we are with each other can completely change. And again, people feel shamed into not acknowledging it for what it is. But we need to have that discussion before we take any step further. Now, listen, what, what, what one man 
finds unacceptable is not going to be the same for the next man. So where he says, listen, one man may generally say, I don't care. As long as you're still giving me what I need, you can gain whatever and it doesn't matter to me. All right. You can change this and it doesn't matter to me. Whereas the next guy, if he's honest, yeah, it will have an impact. And again, the same with you, because I do feel like a lot of women bite their tongue on this and they don't, they're not honest about, yeah, if, if you go from having a decent stomach to a beer belly, <laughs> you, you may not feel the same way or as sexually receptive to him, you know? And, and listen, if that's what it is, that's what it is. There's no reason to lie about it because if you don't tell the truth, you are only setting each other up for failure. So there has to be. So I, I use the physical one because, again, that is is so common and so it, it's one of the least discussed things in relationships. However, there's other deal breakers. It could be emotional. It could be about where you would live. Hell, it could be I can't deal with your mother ever moving into this home. Or family. I, I don't do family. I'm not saying me. You may be like, I don't do family moving into our home. That's a deal. That's a problem for me. Unless it's a special circumstance, I don't rock with that. Whatever it is, discuss it and make sure you two. And, and listen, there are going to be some things like let's just use the moving family in. If you let's say you feel strongly about being able or willing to move family in, and he's like, I don't, I don't rock with it. That may be a discussion where if you talk about it more, there can be a compromise made where, okay, we will only do it under these circumstances and for X amount of time, you know, or if, if you do it, you give him the authority to say when, when it's enough, like, okay, you let your brother move in and he's like, all right, but when I'm, when I'm sick and tired of it, he has to go. And you say, okay, so there's, so some of these deal breakers can be discussed and worked on. But again, you just, it's all about making sure you both are on the same page and truly can build a, an amazing life together for, for the long future ahead. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. Marriage is a magnifier. It's either going to magnify the good or is going to magnify the misery, but it itself will not correct the issues that already exist in a relationship. And boy, are there some 